Now we can discern the chilling, silent scream on the face of this child who is now facing imminent extinction. My name is Bernard N. Nathanson. I'm a physician, a practicing obstetrician and gynecologist. And I think I've had a passing experience in matters of abortion. Now, when I was a medical student in 1949, we had no such science as fetology. We were taught that the unborn child, the fetus, uh, was something in the uterus, but it was really an article of faith as to whether or not it was a human being and whether or not that human being had any unique personal qualities. But the whole story has changed since the 1970s. It was at that time that the science of fetology exploded in the medical community it exploded by means of the introduction of great new technologies such as ultrasound imaging, electronic fetal heart monitoring, fetology, hysteroscopy, radio immunochemistry, and a host of other dazzling technologies which today constitute, in fact, the corpus of the science of fetology. Real-time ultrasound that is, imaging of the child in motion, has been available as a clinical tool since 1976. The room for the ultrasound examination consists of a conventional examining table, as well as the ultrasound imaging device itself, a bulky appearing machine, here. Now the pregnant woman is positioned on the table for the examination. The abdomen is suitably draped the head of the instrument is now placed over the uterus. This device in turn consists basically of a crystal which sends out pulsing high frequency sound waves and a transducer which collects the echoes of these waves. The echoes are then collated by a computer which in turn assembles them into a recognizable image of the living unborn child and the child can be imaged by either a linear scan, which is useful for later pregnancies, or a sector scan, which is more accurate for delineating the child in an early pregnancy, such as this one. The image, reconstructed from the echo pattern, is capable of truly amazing resolution. And so discerning is this instrument that the tiny valves of the heart can be studied as they snap open and shut during the contractions of the heart. Mothers and fathers, for the first time, have been afforded a view of their unborn child by this spectacular technology. And those technologies, those apparatuses and machines which we now use every day have convinced us that beyond question, the unborn child is simply another human being, another member of the human community, indistinguishable in every way from any of us. Now for the first time, we have the technology to see abortion from the victim's vantage point. Ultrasound imaging has allowed us to see this. And so for the first time, we are going to watch a child being torn apart, dismembered, disarticulated, crushed, and destroyed by the unfeeling steel instruments of the abortionist. 